And then I'll just quickly screen grab what we all look like. So feel free to strike a pose. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In case it's your first time here, my name is Ijatu Shaw and I'm a London-based photographer. And it looks like I have yet another series to introduce to you guys. This one's called Art to Art. It's a bit of a play on words, but in these episodes, I'm going to be having a bit of a heart to heart about all things art with other photographers, artists, and people behind the scenes. This will double up as a podcast, which will be available on most streaming platforms. So definitely look out for it. So this episode is all about a group virtual exhibition I was blessed enough to be a part of. And I'm joined by Virgilia and Thomas who put together this amazing exhibition. The audio isn't the greatest in this episode, but let's try to get through it because Virgilia and Thomas really break down the process of the building of a virtual exhibition. And there's a really interesting discussion at the end about diversity and inclusion in the photography world. So let's have an art to art. Hi guys, uh, welcome to this episode of Art to Art. It's really amazing to have Virgilia here today and Thomas, and we're gonna be talking about a really amazing project we worked on together. Um, so yeah, if you guys wanna just introduce yourselves and talk a bit more about your practices and what you do and all that good stuff. So I'll start, I'm Virgilia, and I have worked in photography for the past um, 12 plus years. And I currently run a couple of diversity led businesses, um, one being The Colour Balance, which seeks to develop black and POC inclusion in photography. And the second being Gather, which um, connects brands to inclusive shoot teams um, for motion and stills. I'm Thomas. Uh, I run a studio called Mitchell Studios. Um, my background is essentially in set design. Well, the last 15 years, well, no, not so much. How many years? 10, 10, 10 years experience in set design. Um, and then fusing the end of that to kind of working more with retail brands and personal individuals to design pieces of furniture, artwork, individual spaces. Um, so it's kind of quite a varied and organic background. With your two backgrounds and kind of what you've been working on so far, how did this exhibition come about, this virtual exhibition? Thomas and I are um, friends um, as well as collaborators. So I think um, it really came about initially from us discussing um, just having conversations as friends following Black Lives Matter. And um, Thomas knew that I um, had been running the Colour Balance um, for several years. I founded it in 2017. And yeah, you just approached me, didn't you, Thomas, just to say, is there anything that, um, that any ways that we can collaborate and that you could support? We just took some time to think about what ways um, that a collaboration, you know, could be possible. And I think it was actually you, Thomas, that sort of came yeah. up with this I think, idea. I think we've always known that we'd do something together, like eventually. Um, and it's always been kind of like bubbling away, like what, what actually that was. There was like maybe like a couple of years ago when we had like a chat about this was pre-pandemic. Um, and I think the the introduction of like this lull in what we maybe both were doing in a kind of time to think and like ground ourselves and actually think how could we do something that's relevant to both my space and Virginia's space. I think we have um, we have collaborated um, before on projects um, for campaigns in making you know physical spaces um, that um, Thomas has designed for um, the projects that I've been producing um, which is amazing and I think it was just really you know the idea of doing something virtual um, in and amongst a pandemic when everything you know was so still and we were all um, unable to access so I think that is also what spurred on this project. Obviously it's, it's a long time coming like it was eventually meant to happen and for you to make such an incredible sort of space or spaces for artists like myself to present their work, but also giving people an opportunity to come out and or come online and view some works as well. Um, I think it's just a really, I guess, great use of, of the time that we had as far as the pandemic things being crazy. So 
And we really do thank you for, for creating such an amazing thing. Leading into that, I just wanted to know, like, why the name Sanda? Who came up with the name? Did you both come up with it? And what does it mean for those of us who, you know, don't necessarily know what it means? What does it mean to you as well? So I think um, anyone that works with me knows that I am a huge believer in collaboration. So I think when we came into this project, we just knew you know, having artists such as yourself and everyone that contributed, the project was so meaningful and the wider context of the project was so important that we felt, you know, we really had to have the right words that conveyed um, the meaning and the sentiment in the right way for this project. We got an amazing um, copywriter on board, Simeon Jarrett. He really helped us um, in terms of finding the right language that conveyed everything that this project meant to us. At that stage, the project was, um, you know, at a good stage of development. We knew who the collaborators were. We had a loose idea of um, the spaces at that stage and we brought him in and just, you know, really just discussed the project and everything, you know, we wanted to tell the audience about its meaning. He came up with the word Sonder actually and from the moment we heard it, we, we definitely didn't look back. I mean, he described it as looking at these works that were also vividly different that shared this commonality in that, you know, Sonda, um, its definition is the realisation that each random passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as your own. So we discussed how it's so important that the stories of strangers are not just told through the lens of one demographic. So it was, yeah, perfect, really. I mean, would you agree, Tom? We, we just kind of fell in love with it, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, I was actually slightly blown away when he came up with it because it's so vital like um, and V hit the nail on the head like we both just love collaborating with people because you just realize how much added like value someone who who does that kind of day in day out brings to the process and when you work on a project like this that is super organic um, but you want to get the most out of it bringing in these people um, just really heightens it and when Sonda was like laid out on the table it just made complete sense definition wise, just the way it sat aesthetically looking at the words, like there was something about the word Sonder that I just was like, that's perfect. And then it just, the definition like wove in to all of you guys just so perfectly. Um, so for us, yeah, it actually was, I think it was on like version one of, yeah. of. It was option one, version one of the names that he suggested. Sometimes, you know, on projects like this, the focus is to create exposure for, you know, the talent of your photography and other photographers involved. Um, but there's just so much more that helps to bring it to life. And Simeon's work was definitely a big part of that. But how do these of your spaces work in a particular Sunday? Obviously, do you use a phone? Do you use a computer? Do you need to wear goggles as we usually see on TV and things like that? So how does it work? So VR has had a moment for quite a while. It's definitely not something that's like incredibly new. But the way that I like to think about it, and I think we approached it, is it's the way that we use like VR to create accessibility, number one. The ability to access something globally that is not limitless, because obviously not everyone has access to tech, but a lot of the world has access to tech. So looking in the constraints of that, it's something that no matter of your disabilities or anything of getting out the house or, or visiting these places in different countries when you have galleries and private views and amazing shows you want to go to. The Going back to the accessibility again, it's kind of you can access this space through VR goggles, but the underlying thing for me for that was not everyone has, well, I don't have a VR goggles. It's very hard to get your hands on a good set of VR goggles to actually experience the space properly. So this gallery is being designed for, for use on a mobile or like a tablet or a laptop. And essentially it's hosted like in the cloud. Um, it's a great way to kind of have these spaces online because you don't have to worry about too many people hitting the servers at one point. You can actually, on your phone, you can do like a live view thing. So you hit like the little compass icon. And you actually, your phone uses like the gyro it would if you were doing like a panorama photo 
and you can actually like live pan around the space. It's really easy to access and hopefully we've designed it so it's been like intuitive and not too complicated. Like you can design VR spaces to actually walk around the rooms, um, but this is almost like you're in a fixed position and you have a 360 spin of the room and then things are interactive. So um, there's lots of scope for this to kind of grow. Like you can add sound design, you can add video, you can add all sorts. And actually, if you're into it, loads of brands throughout the pandemic have done kind of really cool things. It's definitely like not a new space. It's almost being reinterpreted really nicely now, just I think because of the pandemic and because of like 3D design is like really, really a good place right now. It's just limitless in terms of what you can do with it. So even as far as me producing really large scale images, cost wise in real life, that would be kind of tricky. I think they need a really big budget. So in terms of us having multiple spaces, each artist had an individual space they could use, which was really incredible. So it just provided like an amazing opportunity to really you know, create the kind of space we wanted for our images and to really think about the scale we wanted. We weren't limited at all by anything, really. Just the fact that we couldn't really do there in real life, but it felt like that was the case. So that was really nice. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think as a creative that you can design a space that is essentially can be anything or feel like anything and touch on from people's emotions. Like it's really hard to in physical spaces. Um, and especially like you even touched on, it's like, from budget point of view, it's like you can make these spaces from a sustainability point of view. You don't have to actually use resources. So it's like, yeah, it has an incredible amount of facets. Um, it would be really interesting to hear actually about both of your approaches in terms of your discussions with each artist, each individual artist that was involved in this exhibition, like how the images influence the rooms and how the rooms influence like the final image selection and so on. Just in terms of bringing together the contributing artists they were all from the Colour Balance Network. Before the Colour Balance grew, I really used to invest time in um, meeting photographers one-on-one -on -one and giving advice and support offline. As it has grown, um, I do that on a much larger scale. So a lot of the one-on-one -on -one time isn't as possible. Um, but I think everyone, yeah, that contributed I had met through those channels including yourself that I'd had a chance to meet you all and really t have time to look through your work and sort of understand your sort of ambitions and drives and everyone involved when I met you all so yourself Jetty Shaw um, Khalil Musa and Serena Brown and Jack Lawson I just knew I had the desire to make some creative, you know, collaboration possible. And um, so I had you all sort of earmarked from when we first met. And I think you and I first met a few years ago. So, you know, it takes time for these sort of connections to come to fruition. When Thomas and I first discussed them, he was like, I love all of their work. They're all so individually great. We quite quickly discussed with each of you that you would want to showcase and my introductions led into Thomas's creating. So, yeah, just following on from V, I I mean, we landed on you guys really early and purely just like the stories behind the images as well as like the imagery themselves. I think that was really key for like my point of view. It's like you can see if there's like a real story and a meaning in a picture. And when for me, when you're designing like a space, it's really like, touching on what it is to actually be maybe there when you're experiencing those things. So for me, it was like, how, how does this process help you guys and us in the future, if we work together, actually create like a real space? So it's like going through the motions in terms of what imagery works well together? How do you want to frame your pictures? What's the context in which we're, we're positioning them? Like, what's the aesthetic of the room? What are the materials we're using? What are the colours? Like, what do we want to feel when we're there? Like, and definitely sound design helped that. Um, so I've, from a broader sense in terms of each person, there was a very like similar like undertone into the creative like direction of how we approached each person, but there was definitely very individual things. So Jack's space was actually the first one that I designed. His imagery is all shot basically on the coast in um, Lagos. I wanted the room to feel like this space had almost like popped up on the beach. 
um, and you could almost see and feel the background of his images around you in the space. So it was just like being really simple with like color choices and textures and the sound design was really super minimal, but just like kind of lapping waves. Um, and when you experience these spaces with like headphones, um, which I recommend you do if you uh, if you sit down and look at it with your computer or your phone, you can really like feel like you're immersed in the space and like your where Jack was when he was taking the images. In Serena, hers was actually probably one of not the hardest spaces, but I think because it's so close to home, her narrative really touched on what we were all going through, um, the class of COVID. So I kind of like found it um, really quite an amazing process to, for me to go through as a designer to like put myself in the shoes of students who have been taken away that kind of moment in their life that is actually quite, it's quite a kind of pinnacle pillar for when you, when you leave school that I think one of the um, subjects of the photos actually described it as like the lasts, like these lasts moment that you you won't ever go through because they've kind of been stripped away from you by COVID. The last bus journey to your school or the last time you have lunch with your mates. Um, and her pictures really kind of captured those emotions. So I kind of wanted to create um, with Serena this space that felt a bit more penned in, like how we were all feeling and how they were feeling a bit more kind of not so open, like the lighting was much lower, the colours were a bit deeper and richer, um, and the red kind of touched on these. Red is quite an amazing colour for like bringing out lots of emotions in terms of like it can be negative, but it can be positive, and it has this kind of quite moody feeling. Um, so, so when we were chatting with Serena to go through hers, there was kind of like that process of how do we how do we make it feel like that? But again, the kind of similar undertones of what we went through, it was really working with Serena to kind of like which imagery goes best with which to tell the story. And she was actually one of the only artists who had um, text and commentary to go with each picture, which kind of really made sense because of like how the, it was a story. It was almost like a storybook hers. Like it was really like individual stories from these people. Um, so it was a great way to like pair up different stories together and pair up imagery in the space. There was a different facet to working with Serena on that. And then Khalil's, imagery he's his was shot in LA and actually his story is quite beautiful really I actually really resonated with how he approached his kind of project which is he almost felt a bit out of his comfort zone because he doesn't doesn't actually like dogs does he or does he like dogs I can't remember yeah I think he's just, just a bit apprehensive of them just that he hadn't had that familiarity which I really really resonates with me I, I didn't grow up with animals or dogs and yeah not just not having that familiarity there is you know an apprehensiveness and like fear of the unknown I guess you kind of felt that um that kind of raw nature in his imagery and just like I love just the fact it was so just of a moment um, it was, he wasn't kind of there planning on taking photos or, and it was just like a seized moment. Um, and his was actually, um, one of the only spaces that was, we kind of came up with this idea of having it just almost like it was sat in the park, um, open top. So Jack's was set kind of outdoors as well as yours, but his was the only one that actually had this open top. So it just felt like the out, outside was coming in, um, and really kind of like creating this harmony within his pictures and the lighting was key for him getting the lighting right is super important and it's quite tricky and so it was really important for his space considering it was completely outside to have these beautiful reflections thank you for um kind of just going into how you went about designing each room and different things in terms of lighting space and sounds because um it's just really beautiful that each person had their own unique space that really resonated with the images and what they were trying to put across as far as that. So like we said, I guess the virtual exhibition kind of provides a kind of initial step into eventually showcasing these images in real life. So like with my project, Taranga, um, I wasn't really sure what to do with the images. I shot them in 2018, I think. So quite a long time ago now. And I didn't know what to do with them. I just knew how they made me feel and how I felt at the time of taking them. So they were taken in Senegal um, whilst I was on a trip there of individuals that I met whilst I was on the beach and chilling and hanging out. So 
I didn't really know what to do with the images. They were very personal to me, but having this opportunity to put them into a, more of an art space um, was really beautiful for me. Working with you was really amazing because you had such a great briefing document for me and such great inspiration in terms of direction of ideas that you had in terms of one, the images you wanted to use, but also you had really good direction in like the materials and the textures and the patterns that you wanted me to start thinking about. Um, and for me, like that, that whole process was super, super fun and collaborative to work with you to kind of see what you were thinking about, but relate that to like a physical space and like how can we be clever with like shapes of the patterns you liked. And because my style is quite, um, quite kind of minimal, quite um, paired back. So it was almost fusing exactly what you wanted to do with something that I sort of thought the aesthetic would work really well with your images. So there was so much to go on with yours because you had such a beautiful color palette. The materials and textures that you referenced were really wonderful. Um, and I think just the meaning behind the collection of images, and I don't know if you wanted to, did you want to go into the Taranga? Yeah. Let me um, explain what Taranga means. So it's a term in Wolof, um, which is you know, a language spoken in Senegal and many other places in West of Africa. And it means hospitality and wealth. I named the project after this because obviously when I went to Senegal, I felt a very nice sense of welcoming. I you know, bumped into individuals that were from my tribe. I was able to able to reconnect with my tribe and um, Islam in general. Yeah, I just really connected with Senegal and Sally in particular, which is where I stayed. So I just really wanted to showcase that sense of welcoming and hospitality and friendship in terms of the new friendships that I formed. So yeah. In terms of a photography perspective, yours was the hardest job to edit because you actually gave the largest edit. There's <laughs> so much in the project. You could have had, you know, three rooms just to yourself. And I hope one day you do. I hope one day you put this full project yeah. in a, like a physical gallery space because it is so beautiful and it was so hard to to choose a, you know a very few images that um that represented the project initially between the three of us sort of came down to that short list and then Thomas built the space he was like no there's there's one image I can't I can't leave out of it and when I look at the space now it's the image with um with the man and the horse and I can't imagine that the space without it now it seems such a key key um image in your space the name Taranga and the idea of hospitality that was really you know we could feel that like thread running through the project you know it was so it, it really resonated so yeah it was yeah the perfect project and I can't believe you sat on it for you know two yeah. Two, nearly three years. So I beautiful. Like that between taking the images and knowing what to do with them. And I guess yeah. that's why the spirit of collaboration is so important. And even in terms of like your suggestions, Thomas, in terms of designing chairs that had the spirit of hospitality and the community and togetherness. Could you go into like the design of the chairs? Yeah, so there's, there's, I really wanted the chairs to really kind of relate to the the rest of the space and the kind of the idea of the space was designed like in the round was to kind of give this idea of like hospitality and like wholesomeness and this kind of round sense of like fulfillment. Um, and the space actually has kind of one set of stairs that goes down to this round section and one set of stairs that leads out. And my idea was this, I just had it in my head of this idea of, people just being led down the stairs into this space and it was very hospitable and it was like one in one out and someone letting someone else up the stairs and this just real calm idea of people moving around the space in the way that kind of reflected what you were trying to portray in the imagery in this kind of like this same fashion when you you one of your key images which is the the lady on the chair and I kind of was I thought it would be so nice to have some furniture in the space and I think the first initial designs were kind of like mock-ups that I just thought we'd put in the space and would see if you you thought the furniture kind of worked. And I think once we established that the we liked the idea of this furniture in the space, I wanted to re revisit the, the pieces and kind of translate some of the shapes that were in the chair. And I tried to think of kind of just like traditional furniture um, methods of how these pieces are made and carved. And they're often kind of carved from single bits of wood. So there's like real like hand finished nature so nothing's really straight um there's ideas of like 
the circles that relate back to the whole space and triangles that I thought each triangle kind of made up the pieces of like a total piece. So on the chairs, there's actually like an equal amount of triangles to make one. Um, there's like four or five, I can't remember how many sections of the pie, so to speak, that make up this one wholesome unit. And that was kind of the idea of bringing the chair into the space and this idea of hospitality and kind of coming together. Um, and it just was like kind of a nice, probably a lot of people maybe didn't notice it that well, but I think it's just really nice that it's in the space and it felt really relevant to what you were trying to say in your images. And I hope it kind of did them justice and did you justice in terms of how it, how it looked. So I think we had through a few versions and um, we ended up in a quite a good place, but um, it was a really beautiful process. And I've kind of, I'm really happy we, we added like a really bespoke fixed piece. And I can imagine that again, translating into a physical environment when, when you have your, um, your show. I actually wanted to ask what kind of feedback have you been getting about the exhibition from individuals, family, friends and industry people as well? Um, I think just from a, a point of view of, you know, its reach um, has been amazing in itself. You know, over 45 countries um, access the virtual space within, I think, the first week. I mean, the commentary has ranged from, you know, that people just found it the most immersive online experience that they had partaken in, which was amazing. And it's so hard because, you know, working on the project and you're so close to me and you're seeing it. And I was literally like, this is the best thing I have ever seen online. And, you know, you feel that way because, you know, I, I love the work of, of all of the contributors. I love Thomas's design and his style. Everything that we were discussing was important about the project. And to hear other people, you know, feel the same, it resonate as strongly to somebody that's experiencing Work in the spaces for the very first time was it actually brought tears to my eyes I'm not gonna lie it really is the most special project I have ever worked on and yeah we had you know a few press outlets pick up on the work on the work so that obviously gave it you know more exposure which is you know a big goal of the project is to create exposure of black and POC talent in photography. I think what was actually really amazing is hearing the feedback from people in and out of the industry, you know, ad world, editorial world, and even especially people that aren't, you know, very tech savvy, like we're thinking of my own family and how they experienced it and they were able to navigate the spaces and enjoy them. And yeah, I think we couldn't have asked for more in terms of response. I think V's right. You spend like so long with your head buried in a project. Sometimes when it comes to the end of it, you're left feeling like, are you the only ones that think this is like good? <laughs> and it's, it's nice when your peers and other kind of people in the industry and other artists and even most importantly you guys um thought it was like worth your time i've i'd never worked on a virtual gallery before and it's hard to kind of tell you what it's going to look like and feel like and end up like without having like an example um and i think the pandemic from my side like design wise had moved me into 3d a lot more because people were accessing content online so it was like designing these spaces um, so you could kind of see slight examples of what could happen, but the actual like overall experience of how you navigate through and you, and you view and you kind of get into this, this way of delivering like culture, it's really hard to like, um, tell you how that's going to be until you actually have a final product. And I think it was just so nice that other people saw that we'd got to that point. Um, and that it had like credibility. And it was, it was something that also um, kind of paths the way, I hope, to what is Sonda in the future, Sonda 2, or, and where we move this, this movement to. And lots of people have reached out to me and Virgilio of kind of so excited to see something like this. And it's like, so like talk to me, what, what, what's next? Like, how do we, what do we do with this technology? And also what do we do with this, this approach of using the technology to showcase um, people's work in this way? 
Um, so from that point of view as well, it's just been, it's, it's been, a, it's been really great. Um, and I hope there's yeah lots more amazing work that will work with you guys and other people from Virginia's network to kind of carry the torch and like start to make a real difference. Yeah, most definitely. And I think it's really special that like you and I haven't even met yet in your life. Um, so the very fact that we could create something like this and just you could, you've really got to know me and my work and everyone else's work as well without having met us is just incredible. So I guess in the spirit of pandemic and, you know, distance yeah. and stuff like that, the fact that we could pull this off is incredible. So, yeah, the execution was amazing, honestly. That's actually blowing my mind. I hadn't actually thought of that in that way that you guys yeah. have never even met and we've created such a beautiful experience. It is crazy. Yeah. That, that, is, <laughs> that is crazy. But like Jatu said, it is. That is so like in the spirit of the moment. It's, yeah, maybe you get more done when you don't meet up. <laughs> but I'm not saying I don't want to meet up. I definitely want to meet up. But it's like, it just felt like a real nice motion, the whole project. Um, and everyone really put put a lot of hard work into it from all, all sides. So there's lots of people to thank. In terms of the artists featured, obviously we're all um, people of colour or black people. What more can the industry do to kind of ensure that these voices and stories are heard? Because, you know, just being given that opportunity was enough to, for me to kind of showcase these images in the first place. So what more can the industry do? I think you've really um, used the right word there, which is opportunity. And I think it's people being aware of the barriers to access for many people to the industry and creating opportunities for inclusion. Uh, I think a big point that we haven't really touched on um, so far is that widely Black and POC people are excluded from um, the majority of art spaces just from the nature of, you know, structural racism and bias in the industry, um, a lot of nepotism and elitism and the way that all of these um, these factors intersect and really create these limiting factors to representation and inclusion. So I think a big part of this project was finding an opportunity to use um, Thomas's skills and the skills of Mitchell Studios and um, network and create something that you are all emerging talent as well. You're all really exciting names in British photography. And I think it's about creating opportunities that might not have existed. You know, it would have taken, you know, a lot of money to create this, you know, in real life. So it's like, how can we circumvent that? How can we go around and produce this creative, beautiful space uh, with the tools that we have and, you know, Thomas, Thomas and I um, speak a lot about allyship and how people can really use their skills and their platforms to create these opportunities. And I think Sonda is an amazing example of, you know, what can be done and what can be achieved. And, you know, a lot of people gave a lot of time to get this project off the ground. It, it wasn't just something that fell together. And I think that's very true of, you know, what the industry needs it really needs people just to give their time and more you know there's many ways that you know we can support diversity and inclusion in the industry and equity as well de and i um but it, it does take you know hard graft and sometimes that's not always you know things you can shout about sometimes it's just a lot of work behind the scenes that it takes to make these opportunities happen um, and i'm very thankful you know, um, especially from, you know, Thomas and Mitchell Studios, it's been an incredible effort in terms of time and manpower um, that has been put in. And, you know, I just want to give you the flowers, Thomas, here, because, you know, that it really, yeah, brought this project together in an amazing way. Yeah, I think as well, it's like Sonda's a fantastic example of what you can achieve if, like you said, if you put in the time and you and you see where you can give resources um, for kind of a greater good, but also it doesn't always have to be a sonder. The little steps, I think, as well as like everyone just looking around and being like, okay, how can we help each other out? Um, what time can I give up? And it doesn't have to be loads of time, I guess. It's just like if we're thinking about these things and we're thinking of how do we 
make a more inclusive world industry especially in this i mean it's 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 kind of like relatable across all creative industries but specifically like photography it is quite just glaringly obvious that just like change needs to happen so it's like what can we do what are the little things we can do as well um so sonda's a fantastic example i hope but it's also like there's there's smaller things we can do to help it doesn't always have to be a sonda but i think we've um yeah we got carried away with sonda yeah it's it's been genuinely one of the most amazing projects i've ever worked on if 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 not one of my favorite projects i've ever worked on from the moment we kind of thought about the idea to it to now i mean it's i literally just got an email my from someone who's emailed me about sonda maybe they know we're doing this um <laughs> and it's still happening um and there's yeah hopefully we'll get more press and we'll do something else um and we'll really keep like the bus moving along and like showcase work that people need to see and artists that need to be given that opportunity it's because it's it just has to happen so yeah the photography industry has been held back so much in terms of uh, diversifying and we're at this point where you know after 2020 it's shone a light on so many of the reasons why we need a more equitable creative industry and photography industry and I think it would be I think Sonda is also a great comment on where where and how are we going to ensure that the same problems don't reinvent themselves in you know the virtual space in metaverse and you know there's been a lot discussed about you know who codes and how they're creating you know these worlds and you know most coders and most people that are creating these spaces are from a very narrow demographic and narrow pool so it's like how are we going to ensure that we create diversity and inclusion from a very early stage in these virtual spaces and so Sondra is also you know, a big commentary on that. That's really a good point. And in general, just behind the scenes, as far as the industry is concerned, like as you said, in terms of coders for the, the virtual side of things, but also in real life, who is on set for shoots and who is being given the opportunity to be there and who isn't. All of it goes hand in hand and even like with the colour balance and, and what you're doing. As far as like the lighting workshops and things like that, that wouldn't necessarily be information that's easily accessible as far as like um, industry-wide knowledge. It's just really amazing to have these spaces and, and things that you're currently doing that kind of help young photographers, budding photographers like myself to just really, I guess, place themselves in the industry, but also you're creating new places and spaces for them to, to do their own thing and to just shine just as well. So I think that's really useful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is very important to me. And I feel as though it's... Um, the Gather has been an evolution of that, my creative production company in, you know, really helping brands connect from a commercial perspective. Um, thank you so much to Virgilia and Thomas for joining us today and speaking more about Sunda, how it came about and about the artists involved and about just everything industry and what more the industry can do. It's been really incredible speaking to you both. Uh, is there anything you'd like to just shout out about yourself? Is there, is there anything coming up that you'd like to mention before we sign out? As, if anyone's watching this and, and more interested when V said about the coding and everything, it did remind me, um, people ask like, how did the spaces get created? So if there's anyone watching it and it's like, has a friend who's like a 3D designer or someone who's like, how did you do it? I'll leave like my email or something, just like email me and I can like let you know all the software and how it is just, it's like completely open source. It's, um, but yeah, just as another thing, if, if people are interested. But I'll shout out the color balance um, because we're, we're really growing as a platform and we're always, you know, welcoming um, new aspiring entrants into um, our community. So um, follow us um, on Instagram. I'll give you a little link, Ajatu, for you to to share. And <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully, um, yeah, people watching this will be inspired to become a part of the network because we value it so much in terms of uh, growing a network that can all um, support each other. Um, so that's really key for us. And likewise, I'm using the colour balance to fuel um, my new work, my new enterprise gather. Um, so a lot of the, the talent that I um, 
am coming across or have met through the Colour Balance, I'm now getting a chance to work with um, through GABA, which um, looks at inclusivity on um, a wider scale. So as well as black and POC inclusion, we look at um, inclusion of um, the LGBTQIA plus community and also um, women and um, other underrepresented groups. Um, so yeah, give a little shout out to the Colour Balance and Gather. In terms of um, onboarding the photographers, I just can't thank everyone for you know making this project as special as it has become because that is first and foremost led by the spectacular photography that we included. So yourself, Ajatu Shaw, um, Jack Lawson, Serena Brown and Khalil Musa, they really um, made this project, you know, more than we could have hoped just by coming on board. So we're very, very thankful. Amazing. Thank you so much um, for joining me, guys. I really do appreciate this. And everyone that's watching, if you'd like to obviously find out more about these projects, then I will link them down below. And yeah, do reach out to Virginia and Thomas as well if you have any questions. Obviously, follow Colour Balance, follow Gavin as well. And yeah, follow uh, Thomas Mitchell as well, Mitchell Studios. Uh, it's been really great speaking to you guys. And if you have a great rest of the day. Well, it's been amazing to talk it yeah. all through. So good. Thank you so much as well. It's like a lot of effort from your side. You seem to be absolutely hustling. So um, it's, yeah, it's thank you, Jatu. Cool, thank you so much, well, and we'll speak soon. Bye, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> hey.